All right, back with chapter 12. <clears throat> it says this, Nathan rebukes David. And the Lord sent Nathan to David. He came to him and said to him, There were two men in a certain city, the one rich and the, one, and the other poor. The rich man had very many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing but one little ewe lamb, which he had brought, which he had bought. And he brought it up and grew with him and with his children. It used, it used to eat of his morsel and drink from his cup and lie in his arms, and it was like a daughter to him. Now there came a traveler to the rich man. He was unwilling to take one of his own flock or herd to prepare for the guests who had come to him. But he took the poor man's lamb and prepared it for the man. We had come to him. Then David's anger was greatly kindled against the man, and he said to Nathan, As the Lord lives, the man who has done this deserves to die. He shall restore the lamb fourfold, because he did, because he did this thing, because he had no pity. Nathan said to David, You are the man. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, and Jesus Christ. I anointed you king over Israel, and delivered you out of the hand of Saul. And I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your arms, and gave you the house of Israel and of Judah. And if, and if and if this were too little, I would add to you as much more. Why have you despised the word of the Lord to do what is evil in his sight? You have struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword, basically David committed murder, and have taken his wife to be your wife, and have killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. So David committed murder against Uriah and committed adultery with Bathsheba. So God's really ticked off right now at him. Um, let's see here. Now therefore the sword shall never depart from your house because you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah that he had to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will raise up an evil against you out of your own house, and I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor. And he shall lie with your wives, or have sex with your wives, in the sight of the of this son. Man, God's gonna allow this to happen. God's gonna allow, you know, he's kind of paying David back for what he did. David had sex with a married woman with the, with the Sheba. Now God's gonna allow uh, other guys to end up having sex with David's wives out in the sun in front of everybody. So it's kind of like God repaying David back for what he did. Um, let's see here. It says, uh, lost my place. It says, For you did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the sun. David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord, and Nathan said to David, The Lord has also put away your sin, you shall not die. I mean, God forgave David for what he did, but does not mean that God will not allow him to be punished. See, God, God will forgive sins, but at the same time, He may still punish you for what you did. So, just because you ask, for, just because you ask for forgiveness from God, doesn't mean He's not well. Bad things will happen to you. Nevertheless, because by this deed you have utterly scorned the Lord, the child who was born to you shall die. Then Nathan went went to his house. Nathan, Nathan said, "The child that you want to have with Beersheba will die." David's child dies, and the Lord afflicted the child with that Uriah's wife bore to David, and he became sick. There, David therefore sought God on behalf of the Lord, on behalf of the child, and David fasted and went and went in and out, or says, uh, and went in and lay all night on the ground. And the elders of his house stood beside him to raise him from the ground, but he would not, nor did he eat food with him. On the seventh day, the child died, and the servants of David were afraid to tell him that the child was dead, for they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, he we spoke to him, and he did not listen. To us, how how then can we say to him the child is dead? He may do himself some harm. But when David saw that his servants were whispering together, David understood that the child was dead. And David said to his servants, Is the child dead? They said, He is dead. Then David rose from the earth and washed the anointed himself and changed his clothes. And he went to the house of the Lord and worshipped. He then went to his own house and when he asked, they set food before him and he ate. Then his servants said to him, What is this thing that you have done? You fasted and wept with the child while he was alive, but when he, but when the child died, you rose and ate food. He said, "While the child was still alive, I fasted and wept for her." I said, "Who knows whether the Lord will be gracious to me that the child may live? But now he is dead. Why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he will not return to me." Solomon's birth. And then David conferred, comforted his wife Bathsheba, and he went into her, and he had sex again with her, and lay with her. 
And she bore a son, and he called his name Solomon. And the Lord loved him, and sent a message by Nathan the prophet, so he called his name Jedidiah, because of the Lord, um, oh, yeah, because of the, because of the Lord. Rabba is captured. Now Job fought against Rabba the Ammonite, and took the royal city. And Job sent messengers to David, and said, I have fought against Rabba, or Rabba, moreover, I have taken the city of orders. Now then gather the rest of the people together and encamp against the city and take it. Let them take the city and it be called by the name. By, or by, my, by, my, say, by my name. So David gathered all the people together and went to Rabbah and fought against them and took it. And he took the crown of their king from his head. The weight of it was a talent of gold and it was very heavy. And in it was a precious stone and it was placed on David's head and he brought out the spoil of the city in a very great amount. And he brought out the people who were in it and set them to labor with saws and iron picks and iron axes and made them toil at the brick kilns. And thus he did to all the seeds of the Ammonites or Jordan, meaning, meaning in a way uh, Jordan became Israel's slaves or servants actually. And um, and thus he did to all the seeds of the Ammonites. Then David and all the people of Je says, then David and all the people returned to Jerusalem. Very inter very interesting chapter here, twelve. You have Nathan rebukes David for David's sin. David committed David committed murder by murdering Bathsheba's uh, husband Uriah, and then he had, and then he slept or had sex with Bathsheba, but you know, which was adultery, which is you know sleeping with, sleeping with a married woman. So he committed two sins because of that, and then God cursed him by by pretty much killing his, his child, and then Solomon was born. And then David goes over to Jordan to capture Rabbah. It's just chapter 12, you know. Um, basically, look, God takes all sin seriously. You know, there's one thing he will not forget, which is blasphemy or, or talking against the Holy Spirit. Um, but here, I mean, like I said, God takes all sin seriously, man. Especially murder and adultery. God's not going to put up with that. God won't put up with no sin, but especially with, especially with uh, adultery and murder. Um, Yes, I mean, if if, you know, if you're doing it right now, like, if you're committing adultery, if you're, you know, and if you're if you're doing this stuff, or, or or if you've done something bad against somebody, whatever you did, God will forgive you if you ask Him to. But it would still does not mean that He will not punish you for what you did. So always remember that God will forgive you, but at the same time, He still will punish you for what you did. Um, so. Never forget that. So try to repent your sins as much as you can. Try your hearts to look for Him every day. So again, that's chapter 12, and I'll be right over chapter 13 here, here in a few.